Hey, welcome everybody. Hey, happy Sunday. All right, yeah. Glad to hear some energy in the room. Welcome to For the One Student Conference. Are you excited Woo. to be here? All right, my name is Travis. I'm from Great Lakes Christian College. Hi, Travis. Hi. My name is Tracy, and I'm from First Christian Church. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. <laughs> yeah, all right, give it up. Hey, we're gonna kick it off with some giveaways, but before yes. we do that, you gotta get on your feet, and you can come right down front even if you want. You don't have to stay there and you know cross your arms. We wanna see some energy. So if you're excited about giveaways, let's see some energy and excitement. Yeah, yeah, but not, not too close, not too close. Just like distant close, that's good, yeah. All right, so if you filled out a tag, we're gonna draw a name, and then you raise your hand where you're at, and our lovely assistant, Ellie, will run you a prize. Yes, all right, the first winner, hopefully you guys have good penmanship. We have a Jacob Riggle. Where's Jacob Riggle? Jacob, right here, okay, Ellie. Congratulations. Congratulations. Would you like to pull the next oh, name? sure, yeah. Oh, here we go. All right, yellow who's ticket. it gonna yellow be? Ticket. Yes. <laughs> Luca Ledford. Did I say that right? Yeah. Where's he at? There he is, right, right there. there. Okay, here we go. Give it up Congratulations. for Congratulations. All right, we got a few more. Next winner, we have Nathaniel Leah. Nathaniel, Nathaniel, where you at, Nathaniel? Oh, there he is. Right down here, all oh, right. Give it up for Nathaniel. Right there, Nathaniel, turn around. <laughs> Give it up all for right. Nathaniel. Okay, we've got Clara Kirkhart. Good, right, right in front, that's good, she was excited. Our next winner, Jordan Strader. Jordan Strader. Congratulations, Jordan. Oh, oh right. Well, draw well, another one. I guess we're gonna have to pull another one. Sorry, Jordan. This one just says Xander. Xander. Oh, there's only one Xander here. Xander. Is that you, Xander? Congratulations. All right, this is our last. All right, one winner more. One more. Here we go. For right now. Liz McCourt. All right, congratulations, very good. Okay, hey, we've got, if you're here from First Christian Church, let's hear the noise. Woo, First Christian! Okay, 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 very good, very good. We got some other churches here though too, so raise your hand if you're not from here. All okay, right, where are you from? give it where up! Are you from? Faith Community Fellowship. All right. Let's hear you. All right, all right. Anybody else? First Church of God Alliance. First Church of God Alliance. Polite group. That's good. I appreciate that. Southwest Church of Christ in Barberton. Southwest Church of Christ in Barberton. Woo! Yeah, there we go. We got some shouters. Another one Anyone over else? here. Anyone else? Anyone else? We hit them all. You right there. New life in Clay City, Indiana. New Woo! life, Clay City, Indiana. Oh, wow, Indiana. how far did you guys drive? How far is that? Six, Six hours. Six hours. Give, it up, guys. Six Give hours. it up for them. That's crazy. How many? Raise your hand if you drove further than six hours to be here tonight. Out there? No. Okay, okay. what other churches we wow. got? I see her right there. She's got her hand raised right there. Right here, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, all right. Well, welcome. We're, we're happy here. to have we're you. Here. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, hey, we're, we're excited. Everybody's here tonight. Uh, we do have one, like, battle, actually. It's like a rap battle. And we're going to oh, need some volunteers for us, some people who are excited about we rapping. We need six volunteers. Yeah, so let's see. Six volunteers. One. We're gonna, yeah, this guy right here. Right. Come on up. You want to do it? Come on, Come up. on up here. And uh, let's see. i got to go out here where I can see. You're not doing it. No. <laughs> oh, you got to do it now. Come on up here. We'll go with uh, this guy right here. 
Yeah, yeah, come on up. You had your hand up, right? Now you're shaking your head. No, oh, yeah, that's all right. How all much? right. We got four, oh, we two got more. One coming up here. We two got more. five. Right here, this one. All right. And we got our you, six, got, yeah. you got six. All right, we got our Excellent. six for our battle. All right, all right, let's, let's take a step back for a second. Right on this line for me. And uh, introduce yourself. I'm Jake. This is Jake. Let's hear it for Jake. Come on, Jake. I'm Cohen. 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 Give it Give up, it up for, Cohen. for Cohen. I'm Kim. Kim. Kim? Cameron. Cameron. Samora. 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 So give it up for Samora. Lucy. Lucy. Juanita. Juanita. Excellent. All right. This is how it's going to work. We'll save that for last. Let's go with this one here. We're going we're gonna to see. Let's... Um, have you ever heard of Dr. Seuss? Yeah, you guys ever heard of Dr. Seuss? Okay, so let's do this. Line up real quick, birthday order. Go, no, tell me, you guys line it up. Yeah, no, just, just month, month birthday order, go. I'm gonna time to see how long this takes them to figure it out. <laughs> All right, perfect. So you two are gonna go first. What you're gonna do is they're gonna put some music on for you and you're gonna wrap this page of the Sneetches. <laughs> that might be actually a different story, I don't know. It's Dr. Seuss anyways. You have to read a from sample? the book every word on that page. You want, you want me to sample? Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, hold on, hold on here. Hold your spot there. You guys can you get you prep yourself here. I'll give you I'll give you a sample. Oh, the places you'll go. Oh man, don't Random start Random page flip. Can I get some get some background music here? Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. <laughs> oh, give it up for Travis. <laughs> Okay, so you get the idea. You have much longer to read, but I'm gonna give you the mic. I want you to step out to the center of stage and give it what you got. Are you ready? You got it! <laughs> this, this makes the things quite difficult at McCaves, as you can imagine with so many daves. And often she wishes that when you were born, she had named one of them Butkin Van Horn, and one of them Hoose Boos, and one of them Sminnen, and one of them Hot Shot, and one of them Sunny Jim, and one of them Shardrick, and one of them Blinky, and one of them Stuffy, and one of them Stinky. Another one Putt Putt, another one Moonface, another one Marvin O Gravel Balloon Face, and another one Ziggy, and another one Soggy Muffin, and another one Buffalo Bill, and another one Buffalo Buff, and another, and one of them Sneepy, and one of them Weepy Weed, and one of them Sir Michael Mick Carmichael Zut, and one of them Oliver Boiler Butt, and one of them San Sibnar Buck Buck McFate. But she did not do it, and now it's Oh, yes! Okay, okay, hold that spot, hold that spot. Now you're gonna do the same page. Nice. Okay. High five. This is the battle, so step out there and give Are that you sure about this? Shot. Are you yes, sure about absolutely. this? You got you this. Sure Thanks. You Thank you. All right, let's hear it for her, guys. Thank you. Drop the beat. <laughs> This makes things quite difficult for Miss Caves, as you can imagine so many of the Daves. As often as she wishes that born, they were born, and she named them one of Brooke and Horn. She, <laughs> one of
one of them in who's, and the other men in sin, and one of them in hot shot hinch and a gym. One of them is shut off, one of them in blinky, one of them stuffy, one of them is sticky, one of them hot putt, other moon face, one of them Marvin O gravel balloon face, one of them ziggy and one of them muff. One below low bill, one below full buff. One of them was sneepy, one of them was weepy weed, one of them was bear's daughters, one of the hairy sweet, one of them sir Michael Kaplan's other son. One of them was Oliver Bullet Bully Butt. One of them was Ann Bar Buck Buck Nick Fate. One of them she didn't do it, now it's too late. Oh! oh nice! <laughs> Thanks for not dropping the mic. It looked like you wanted to. Okay, so you two stand out here, side, side by side here. One of you here, one of you here. Okay. By applause off the same page, which one? is the winner, okay? So here we go. Okay, okay, and... All right, congratulations. Okay, make you that, you got a prize for them. Come on yep, over yep. here, guys. Come on over there. All right, next up, we've got Green eggs and ham. You ready for this? No. Okay, so it's not as long of a page, but I, I know you can do it. I got this. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go. Step right up. Step right up. Let's hear it for him, guys. About the list. Okay. I, I could not, I would not on a boat. I will not, I will not with a goat. I will not eat them in the rain. I will not eat them in a train. Not in the dark, not in a tree, not in a car you let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I will not eat them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. Well done, well done, okay. You're next. Same page. You can do it. Let's hear it for her. I am not here with a boat. I will not eat them with a goat. I will not eat them in the rain. I will not eat them in a train. And not in the dark, not in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I don't like them in a box. I don't like them with the fuck. I don't like eat them in a house. I don't like eat them with the mouse. I don't like eat them here or there. I don't like them in. Well done, both of you. All right, step out here. Step out here where this is the rap battle. They both did great, don't you think? Give them both a round of applause. Excellent job. Okay, here we go. Woo! Let's hear it for him. Woo! Good job, good job. All right. All right. Way to go. Okay, you can go see Tracy. She's got something for you over there. All right, guys. There you go, girl. Last one, wait, wait. and this is my personal favorite. Because Travis Fox, Fox on socks, all right? So don't mess this up. No pressure. This is a, this is a page turner. Do you need an extra hand? I can turn the page for you. So you're going to start here, turn the page, and then wrap the rest. You ready? And should I stop at the end of the book? No, just one page. All right. Okay. No, no peeking, though. All right. Step right up. All right, guys, let's hear it for him. Here he goes. Wait a minute, Mr. Socks and Fox. When the fox is up in the bottle where the Tweedle Beetles battle and the pedals and the puddle and the noodle and poodle. This is what they call Tweedle Beetle Noodle Waddle Waddle Battle No Dodo Puddle Socks and Socks, sir. Fox and Socks on your game done, sir. Thanks for your lots of fun, sir. Oh! Wow, all right. That was a lot faster than we anticipated. Well done, well done. Give him a round of applause. Okay. Here we go. You just gotta do the next page. This one? 
Yeah, yeah, but you just start here. All right, back. Right there. Ready? <laughs> yeah. You got it. You got, got it. it. Let's hear it for him. Come on, guys. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Fox Fox. When a fox is in the bottle, where? It's a Tweedle Beetle battle with their paddles in a puddle on a noodle eating poodle. This is why they call it a Tweedle Beetle. Noodle Poodle bottle, paddle, bottle, 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 fox and sock sir. Hey, way to go, guys. Way to go. All right, step right up here. It takes a lot of guts to get on stage and rap in front of people, especially if you're not used to that. Okay, so step right up. Here we go. Applause meter. Okay, okay. Ooh, that was pretty close. Let's, let's hear it again. All right. It's a tie, it's a tie. Hey, well done, guys, well done. All right, go see Tracy. Oh, don't forget, yeah, we're right over here. You're welcome, good job, guys. Awesome. Let's cheer for all our contestants, guys. Okay, okay. All right, we're gonna move into a time of worship. And uh, before we do that, I'm gonna have a time of prayer. If you would stand and bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we're gathered in this place because you have something to speak to us tonight, each and every one of us. Lord, there's a lot of reasons why we made our way here tonight. It might be a friend invited us, we felt like we had to be here because we're on a leadership team or we were asked to, and no matter how far we had to travel or how short, Lord, the only reason we're here is because of you. Pray, Lord, that as we move into this time of worship, our hearts would be open to hear what you have for us. Speak, for we are listening. And allow your spirit to move in us so that we can understand how you want us to move from here tonight. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. amen. What's up, y'all? Come on, come, what's up, y'all? Come on, make your way to the front tonight. We're gonna have a good time and worship the God. Y'all don't be distracted, but let's lose our minds and worship tonight. Come on, y'all, let's go. Make some noise tonight.
can have a seat. Let's hear it for that worship session. That was a great song. I love that song because, listen, here's the deal. We sing because Jesus loves us and we love him back. And if you hear nothing else tonight, know that God loves you enough that he would allow his son Jesus to die on a cross for your sins. Uh, we're going to have a speaker come out. Rocky Martinez is here tonight. He uh, he's had a long journey here. I talked to him earlier. He's from Texas originally, lived in many states, and now he lives in Indiana. He's a worship leader for the last 17 years, I believe he said. And most importantly, he loves Jesus, and he wants to tell you about him. So give it up for Rocky. Check. Hey, can I, uh, they're probably going to hate me for this, but can I get our worship team to come out if they're not out already? Yeah, like out, out. Okay, here's some trickling in. Hey, I just felt like uh, I wanted y'all to be in the room whenever we did this, but not everybody's here yet. Hey, real quick. The guy, these guys have been putting in hours and hours and hours. Can we just honor them tonight? Just thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys so much. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for leading us into the throne room. Um, you guys could chill now. Um, I have been, uh, man, I just feel like I'm in a, God's been stirring up a lot in, in my life in praying for you guys like crazy. My wife and I, my wife is Lenny, by the way. She was on the far right hand side. She's over there waving her hand. That's my wife. She's an incredible worship leader. Um, and I have the privilege of calling her my wife. Uh, we have been praying like crazy for y'all. Um, leading up to this. 
And um, here's the bottom line. I do not want you to walk away from tonight with a message from me. My heart longing more than anything else is that the Lord would speak to you directly into what he wants to tell you tonight. I believe in the power of God. I believe in all the gifts. I believe in all the fruits. Bottom line, it is for our encouragement. So I just want you to know, I love you. Even though I don't know each and every one of you, I love you. You are a part of the big C church, the kingdom of God. Uh, Quick shout out to the church that came from Indiana because that's where we came from. Big ups. How many of y'all are there? Is it just one person? Where's the church from Indiana? They left. Oh, it's, it was us. Oh, y'all were shouting us out. Oh. <laughs> I, I retract that. Let me pray for us. Holy God, I pray that your presence would fill this place. God, I thank you for how you have led me in these past few weeks in preparation for this moment right now, holy God. Lord, will you lift our hearts, our heads tonight? for the word that you have for us, God. I pray more than anything else that they would feel your love, they would feel your presence tonight. God, speak through me tonight. I don't want a single word to be from my preference. For my ambition, but God, all for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, we all said. Amen. Amen. I've been uh, back and forth with Clarence. Um, Clarence is a friend of mine. We share a really, really good friend um, that I consider family. And um, as we were going back and forth, I was telling him, hey man, I have this idea. I feel like I wanna talk about the Holy Spirit. And I felt good about it, so I was preparing for that. And then (laughs) God woke me up with the dream of what I was to talk about tonight. And I just want you to know, I am saying this from a place of love, not from a place of judgment. You guys with me? Of love, not from a place of judgment. What I felt like the Lord wanted me to talk about today is worship. Now, worship the big definition of it, our entire life is to glorify God in every way. That's what worship is. But what I wanted specifically to talk about today in the dream that God showed me was the assembly of God. When when the church gathers together and we call them worship services, that's what I felt like the Lord wanted me to talk about. So if you're a note taker, feel free to take notes. If I don't think they took up y'all's phones, did they? Clarence, did did you take up their phones? Y'all give me a thumbs up if you have your phones. Cool, if you have your Bibles. I want you to be in the Word tonight, okay? There's gonna be nothing on the screen. You're gonna have to dig in. I'll give you the reference, but I want you to go to the source. I want you to go to the source. So here's the definition of worship. I got this from Wayne Grudem, Systematic Theology. It's an incredible resource for you to find. But the definition of worship and what we're talking about in the assembly of God, when we come together as a church, is the activity of worshiping God in his presence with our voices and our hearts. It's the definition of worship. Somebody just got an alarm. That's what we're gonna be talking about tonight, okay? I just wanna ask you a question. When you walked into this room tonight, where you are right now, where's your heart? Where's your mind? What were you thinking of when you walked in? 
when you regularly attend church? Where is your heart? Where is your mind when you walk in? What are your expectations for the day? It's not a trick question. I want you to really think about it right now. I'll give you a second. Just think about where your heart is right now, where your mind is right now, when you walked into the room tonight, or even this morning, if you went to church this morning. Where is it? I could tell you this. Did you notice if God was in the room when you showed up to church this morning? When you walked in, did you notice if the Father's presence was in the room when you walked in? Is that a question that we regularly ask? God, are you in the room? Do you know his presence? Are you familiar with his loving and good and powerful presence when he shows up in the gathering? This is not a place of judgment because I have failed time and time and time again. When I walk in, the spirit of cynicism, of criticism. This is how you know that maybe you are not in tune or aware with the presence of God when you walk into the room in the church service. You might be thinking, I wonder what songs we're singing today. Are we singing my favorite song? Man, I hate that song. If I hear Graves in the Gardens one more time, I'm gonna flip out. Anybody have that song that you're like, dude, we need to just kill that song? Am I the only one? I know I'm not. <laughs> Is my favorite worship leader gonna be in the room? Are they singing today? Who's the speaker for tonight? Is our senior pastor in the room, is he delivering the message or is it someone else? These are the questions that we begin to ask when we have missed the awareness of the holy presence of God when he shows up in the room. And I feel like most of us haven't been taught how to worship or what worship even is when we come together. This is not from a place of judgment. This is from a place of love. Because by the end of tonight, I would love for the Holy Spirit to get you tuned into his presence. That every single time that you gather together with people to worship the living God, you feel his presence and sense him in the room. Because if you don't, I pray that you would begin to call out to him to show up. I wonder if you know the presence of your father and what happens when we worship in spirit and in truth, the way that Jesus commanded us to worship him. That's the acceptable worship of the living king. So here's what I wanna do tonight. I want us to go back to the Old Testament and read something a little bit and see how God showed up. Here's, here's, here's been the convicting thing as God kind of gave me this dream and gave me this word to give to you guys tonight is that I think we have forgotten who our God is when he shows up in the room. And I wonder how many people are searching for God and they go to the church and they don't experience his goodness, his power, and they go somewhere else. I felt like the Lord just kind of put this on my heart. My brother who led me to Christ walked away from Jesus. It messed me up. It messed me up. When I was talking to him, he left. He left the church because when he showed up to a church service, he just thought it was all fake. He thought it was all fake. We have this term that I uh, stole from Matt Chandler. He, he says, Jesus juking. Uh, it just means like don't sidestep what I'm saying. Like here's, I, here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying what we do as the American church with the screens and the big lights and the big music. I'm not saying that is wrong. Do you hear me? I'm not saying that is wrong. It always comes back to the heart posture of our hearts on why we do what we do. So when my brother told me that he walked away 
from God. Here's what it hit me. I wonder how many church services I've led worship and not asked the power of God to move. I wonder how many of you are sitting in this room right now. You don't believe in God. Well, this just all seems just kind of fake. Like it's, it's cool, we hang out together, we do songs. But man, the presence of God, like that is not something that you think about. It's a flippant thing to you. And I'm here just to call you back to a reverence of the living God. So I want you to turn your Bibles. Sorry, y'all, I'm, I cry a lot. So get used to that. I want you to turn to Hebrews 12. When you get there, say, yeah. Here's some Hebrews 12. Thank you for that uh, iPhone lift up. Appreciate that. All right, Hebrews 12. I want you to turn to verse 18. Y'all with me? Here's what it says. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire, darkness and gloom, and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable, innumerable angels in festival gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God. Here's what this is painting. This is painting in Exodus with Moses where God began to assemble what he wanted to be the gathering of the church, okay? There was a lot of sacrifices done. There was a place called the Holy of Holies where the literal presence of God was manifested on the earth. The literal presence of God was in their midst and the high priest could not go in but once a year. And he had to be clean and obey all the sacrificial rituals that God had put on his people in order to enter into the holy presence of God. And when you read Exodus, sometimes it's so difficult to understand. When you read Leviticus, it's sometimes so difficult to understand. But let me just tell you this. If you didn't enter the presence of God with a rightful, sacrificial heart, you could lose your life. That might be hard to hear tonight. I just, I just want you to understand the gravity and the depth of how holy our God is. He is a holy God. And so when we show up on a regular basis to our student gatherings, college gatherings, church, wherever you attend church, and we approach the presence of God with a not reverent heart, I wonder how God must be feeling that his kids don't bow in reverence. And I'm talking about a heart posture. Y'all with me? And I know that we're under the new covenant. Praise be to God that we have Jesus that covers us by his blood, that he has made us perfect. And so when God sees us, he sees his son and he receives us. Here is the point that I believe that God is trying to call you to. I pray that you, we would become a people that are unhurried in the living presence of God and that we bow in reverence to our God. I'm not saying we can't have fun. I'm not saying we can't dance for joy in God's presence because that was incredible. That was absolutely incredible. It's a heart posture thing.
We're going to stay in Hebrews. At least I think we are. Yes. I want you to jump down to verse 28 in chapter 12. Give me a year if you get there. It says this, Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. It's good to have healthy fear of the presence of God. Not being afraid of him, but having a healthy reverence of who he is. So that when we come before him and offer him our worship, it comes from a place of a good heart bowed before him. Now, worship is a spiritual activity. It happens in the spiritual realm. It doesn't just happen in the physical. And God does some incredible things in the midst of his people when we gather together. Here's what I would love to see tonight when we enter back into worship. Is that we would be a people that are tuned in and are aware of the presence of the living God anytime we show up together to worship him, to offer him our voices. That's not just for the stage. It's not just for the stage. It's also for every single one of us that we'd be poured out to him. Will you stand with me? I wanna, I wanna read one more scripture and then I wanna do something together. turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 5 <laughs> starting at verse 13 this is my prayer for us tonight this is my longing for us every single time that we gather together whatever church you're a part of starting at verse 13 You guys there? It says this. And it was the duty of the trumpeteers and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord, this is what they sang, for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. I wanna invite you, um, there's nothing magical about this, but I do believe that when we just act out, we take a step in faith, the literal step in faith, sometimes the heart, our heart posture begins to shift. I want to invite you. I want to invite you to come up to the altar of the Lord and to bow with me. And I just want to pray want to pray over us so if you're willing to do that please come up adults you could do it as well you don't have to or maybe you could join me in praying if you're willing and able worship after this worship team if you want to get set y'all get set
Let's just close our eyes. Just close your eyes to remove any distractions. Yes, the band's coming up on stage. It's fine. It's fine. Just focus on the Lord right now. apart for him. I don't know what you're struggling with, what obstacles in the way, but I know when my father's in the room. And we hand those things to him. restoration, there's revival of the heart. God, I pray against pride. Lord, you oppose the proud and give grace to the humble. God, will you make us a humble generation? Moses longed for the day that you and I live in right now, that the Holy Spirit will be poured out on everyone, on everyone, the young, the old, the men, the women. We are living in a day that Moses longed for that we could enter boldly into the Holy of Holies, the presence of the living God, through the blood and finished work of Jesus. So right now, Holy God, I pray that you would stir up a people that are set apart for you, a generation that doesn't want to rush your presence, Holy God. Lord, I pray for the real thing pray for the real thing that your Holy Spirit would touch us God and set us apart you say you are jealous God you're a jealous God your glory you will not share with anyone else so Holy Father I pray that you would stir in us a pure heart clean before you God fill us with your spirit that when non-believers show up they would feel and sense your real presence and bow down and worship you, God. I pray for holy hearts right now, God. But will you look at the adults, the students in this room right now that are bowed before you, not just physically, but also in heart. Make us unashamed of the things that you've called us to, God. So I pray, Holy Jesus, I bless, I bless everyone in this room, God, with a longing and an awareness that they would recognize your voice. Every time that you speak, your sheep recognize your voice, Holy God. I pray that these people would become aware of your presence. When they walk into a grocery store, when they walk into their school, that they would be able to sense when you are there, God. They would be aware and asking what you want them to do. I pray for a boldness. I pray for a boldness, God. Whether, if, whether it's even kids leading their families. I pray you would do it, Holy Jesus.
like a thick cloud. Fill us, lead us in worship. Do what only you can do, holy God. Receive your glory. This isn't about anyone else. God, I pray right now, every leader, every parent, everyone on this stage, holy God, I pray against the spirit of pride. God, we would be low before your heavenly throne. Here's the last thing I want to say, and then we're going to just get into worship. How would we receive the King, King Jesus, when he shows up into the room? What would be fitting to receive a king of his glory if he showed up in this room tonight? Let's worship him that he would be enthroned on our praises. It's in Jesus' name. God, will you come and stir it up? Stir it up.
God doesn't fail, but you've been through it. And your heart is not believing what you're singing out. It doesn't connect because you've been through something. Some traumas happened in the room. I think it's okay to be upset right now in this moment, but I think the key is to lay it at his feet. And I think we have an opportunity right now for those who have been hurt, for those who have been abused, for those who are dealing with suicidal thoughts right now, for those who have anxiety that is so deep within you that you don't even think that, like your, your brain is messed up. Like you can't even walk into a room without instant anxiety overwhelming you. So singing these words, make, they make no sense to you because you don't feel it. I think I can look across this room, adults and kids alike, and I know that each one of you has a story. Each one of you has something that's going on in your life. And I, I'm, I'm looking at each, each one of you and I don't see you guys as kids. I know that my God is a God who speaks and he moves like he did in those days. He moves right now and he wants to speak with you tonight. I'm telling you right now, he wants to speak with you individually tonight. But I think it takes something from us too. We can't always close the door and expect a conversation if the door's closed. Sometimes we gotta open it up, even if it's hard, even if it's difficult, even if it's scary. There's something about that bridge though, I'm safe with you. There's something, people in this room I feel like are walking through a season where you don't feel safe. You don't feel safe. But I'm telling you right now, because I've walked through it, because I've seen it, because I've done it, my God is a faithful God. He is nothing but good. There is no shadow of turning within him. He is con consistent. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. He is always the same. Even if you don't feel it right now, sometimes we have to declare things.
some of us have those places in our heart that we're like, you can have it all, Jesus, but you can't have this. I'm gonna let you have all of it, but I'm gonna cast shadow over this one part. And the reason that I'm doing that, Lord, is because I wanna give you everything except for this. But I'm here to tell you right now that we have a God who brings light into the shadows, who comes into every corner and every inch of what our hearts are, and He brings us into freedom. He breaks off the addiction. He breaks off the oppression. He breaks off the anxiety. for a moment. I'm going to sit down too, y'all, because, whoo, man, anybody feeling a little uh, emptied for Jesus tonight? Man, when we come into these moments, we get to spend time pouring ourselves out for what God has done. It's such a beautiful thing. And I was uh, 17, and I was going into my senior year of high school. And I thought I had everything planned out for me. I thought I knew exactly where I was gonna go and what I was gonna do and the, the career path that I was going to make. And then I had this life transformative intersection with the person of Jesus. You see, I grew up in church like a lot of you guys did. Holy Spirit. Uh, I grew up in church like a lot of you guys did. And I had this moment when I was 17 and I was sitting in a big room in Milligan, Tennessee with a bunch of other high school students at a CIY conference. I think some of y'all know about that. And I had this moment where God spoke into my life and said, you've just been playing church. You've just been playing church. You've gone week in and week out and you know all the things and you've been there all the time and you know how to play the game really, really good. And then Jesus said to me, this to me as clear as day, but I don't have your heart. And I remember sitting and soaking in what Jesus was saying to me. And I remember sitting on the campus of Milligan thinking through my options. Because at this point in time, I thought, well, okay, like if God is real and if God is really speaking to me, then I have to answer. And to not answer is to answer. And so I sat with my youth pastor and I was wrestling through all of these things and unbeknownst to me, he already knew a lot of the things because the Holy Spirit had pressed it on his heart to know the things that I had not shared. And so in God's way, God called me to the carpet and he had a come to Jesus moment with me. And I knew in that very moment that to give my life fully surrendered, 100% completely into the will of God was going to mean for me that it was going to change the entire trajectory of my life. That every plan that I had, every idea that had formulated in my mind was going away in order to pursue and follow the path that he was laying in front of me. And right now, there are a lot of you who are scheming and planning for what it is you think you want to do. You're taking assessments and you're going to class and they're telling you, you should do this career and you should do that job and you should go to that school. And you're not considering what it might be that God is in fact laying right in front of you. 
Now, I believe that when I read the New Testament and I read the words of Jesus, that God's command is for all followers to devote themselves to the work of the ministry of the Lord. And what I mean by that is this, that no matter where you go or what you do or what career path might be in front of you, that as long as you are following Jesus and as long as Jesus was ordaining the steps that you are taking as you place one foot in front of the other, that you can honor him and follow him as he leads you into whatever career path you may make or you may go. You could be a doctor, and as if you're doctoring people in the name of Jesus, God is going to honor that. You could be a teacher, and as long as you're teaching with the spirit and presence of Jesus in your life, God is going to honor you in that. He is going to set your path in front of you so that you can walk that and honor him and pursue him and be obedient to him in whatever path he might lay in front of you. But there's one other path that maybe God is laying in front of some of you tonight. And it might be a path that God is laying in front of you guys as you seek and soak in his presence and discover what he's wired you for and what he's called you to. You see, when I had that experience when I was 17, I realized, okay, if I'm gonna go all in, if I'm giving Jesus everything that I have, that means that, I think God's calling me to go into ministry. I feel like God's stirring within me to pursue working vocationally in a church, on a mission field, with an organization that was intentionally, specifically, and strategic about spreading the good news and the gospel of Jesus. I'll say this. Ministry is not going to load your bank account. Working in a church and being a pastor or a ministry leader is not going to always make you have the most amazing, bestest of friends. Not everybody is going to like you 100% of the time. I read this article a couple years ago that said pastors and ministry leaders rank in the top 5% of worst jobs to have. You deal with a lot of crap and you don't make a lot of money. (laughs) And a lot of that is true. But I will tell you this. I've been doing ministry for 20 years. I started when I was in college, when my home church asked me to take over as the youth pastor for a summer. And I've been doing it ever since. And yeah, there are tough days and there are tough seasons but there is nothing that I would rather do than to teach people about who Jesus is and to walk alongside of people as they take steps in relationship with Jesus. Now, ministry looks in a lot of different ways. For me, a lot of you guys knew me as the student pastor here at FCC until I switched roles a year ago and became the teaching pastor. Before that, I did ministry for four years in Indiana as a student pastor and then eight years at a church in Iowa before that. You never know where God is going to lead you. I had no plans or intentions to ever go to Iowa and it was eight of the best years of my life. I still have so many friends and ministry connections that are there. Uh, My kids, well, two of my three kids were born there. Iowa was home for us and God did unexpected things in unexpected ways. God might be calling you to get involved in your kids' ministry at your church, wherever it is, to start coming alongside of kids and teaching them about Jesus. And as you do that, maybe God's gonna stir something inside of you. You're in student ministry now. What are ways that you can lead and influence and impact because of the gospel being lived out in your own life? We've had a great opportunity this weekend to see some of our our Christian colleges that we love so dearly come and hang out and be present here at the For the One conference. And those are great places to go and get education and to get experience and to get your feet in the pool when it comes to pursuing ministry. But I wanna encourage you in this. I remember I had a friend once, actually it was a student of mine once, who she felt God was calling her to go into ministry and she was a phenomenal worship leader. 
And she came home from a, a camp that we did with our students one summer, and she sat down with her parents, and she told her parents, I think God's calling me to go into ministry. I mean, she was amazing. She could lead a room of thousands of adults to the throne room of Jesus as a 16-year-old girl. The Spirit of God was working in her and working through her. I remember we got back from camp that year and she texted me and said, I just had a conversation with my parents, which she was terrified of. Her parents' response when she told them that she felt like God was calling her into ministry, they said, you'll never make a living doing that. You'll never provide for a family doing that. You'll never be fulfilled doing that. And I tell you this, because deep down inside my heart broke for Alyssa to have the people in her life that she felt like should be the number one supporters in her life let her down, held her back. And I'm telling you this because it's not always the easiest of paths, but it is well worth the journey. Alyssa does graphic design full-time now, but she leads worship in her church almost every single Sunday. Ministry looks different for her. She's not paid staff, but she's pursuing Jesus in ways that God has wired her for and ingrained in her. I don't know what God might be inviting you into. It could be pastoring or ministering at a church on staff. It could be going into a foreign mission field where you're going into different countries and different cultures and helping people know and hear and experience and walk with Jesus. And we need more ministry leaders. We need more pastors. Look at me and Clarence, we're getting old. He's not even back there, where is he? There he is, look at that gray in that man's beard. We ain't gonna be around much longer, y'all. <laughs> but here's what I want you to know. As you sense how God has wired you, as you feel out what God has created you to do, trust this, that as you walk with him, whether it be in a vocation field or a ministry field, as you walk with him, he is faithful and he will never let you down. He will always be there in the midst of whatever you may face. And so I'd ask you to consider this. Spend time talking to Jesus. Spend time talking to your youth pastor, your small group leader, and ask them questions. Hey, do you think maybe God's calling me into ministry? I know that there are some of you in this room today that I had the privilege of having that conversation with when I was the student pastor. And it's so cool to see you continue to raise up and to grow into that calling. And I cannot wait to see what it is that God wants to do in you and through you. So I wanna pray for you. And the whole point of me coming up tonight and sharing this is, and we just wanna continually put that in front of you to let you know that there's opportunities to pursue working in a vocational ministry opportunity. And if you wanna have those conversations, we'd love to have that. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for this group of students who've come out tonight to empty themselves in this place. And God, I know this, that we, we when we empty ourselves of ourselves, we make more and more room for you and your presence to reside in us. And so God, tonight, as we continue to empty, may you fill, may you give us direction, may you lead us in your ways and the only ways that you can, God. I'm so thankful to be a part of tonight, to be able to worship alongside of these guys and to rally around this generation to see what it is that they are going to do for your kingdom. We love you so much. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
So God, as we transition into like more upbeat things, God, let us not lose our honor and reverence for you, Father, because you've always been there and you always will be, always. So Holy Spirit, be magnified and honored and glorified in everything that we're about to do, in everything that we've done, Father. We love you in Jesus' name. Everybody say. We're gonna go into something a little bit more upbeat. Y'all go with that? Yeah. yeah. You guys ready? ready. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> is mine Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine Heir of salvation I'm purchase of God Born of His Spirit Oh, I'm washing His blood Yeah. 
let's hear it for one worship, guys. Let's hear it. All right. Well, you guys are more than welcome to have a seat where you're at. It does not matter. I have a confession to make real quick. This is my first ever student conference. I am not like you guys. I did not grow up in the church. So I just want you guys to know real quick, you guys are filling my cup right now, all of you. This is amazing. I wish I did this when I was your guys' age. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for filling my cup tonight. It's just wonderful to see you guys. And guys, there's such a power in telling your story. I don't know, does anyone here know how to tell their story, their testimony, how they met Jesus, anyone? It's scary, right? You're afraid of judgment. You're afraid of that shame or that guilt or whatever it is, but there's such power in it, let me tell you. And that's part of my story. I'm not, I did not grow up in the church. I just got baptized seven years ago. I'm in my 30s. I won't tell you exactly where in my 30s, but it's been a while that I was at where you guys are at right now. But let me just tell you, keep going, keep growing. Right now, I get to introduce a guy who's gonna come up here and share his story with you. So would you guys welcome Rocco Wolf right now? How's it going, everybody? Like she said, my name is Rocco Wolf. Uh, before I get started, can we just hear it for the worship team, Brian Shelley, Rocky, everyone that came up here? Now, if you guys don't know me, I go here at FCC. I'm 16 years old. I'm gonna be a junior next year at Hoover High School. Uh, I have a sister, Zoe Wolf. She's gonna be a sophomore at Hoover High School. Got have amazing parents, amazing family. So my testimony is a little bit different. I know she came up here and said, it's how you met the Lord. Well, I've had the pleasure of being raised that way. I've had the pleasure of having amazing parents, amazing grandparents, all of that. And in my 16 years, there's been a lot of challenges. There's been some times where I've almost even doubted my faith. Uh, some of the things that really got me down, um, when I was in middle school, a couple, like a couple years ago, um, my other side of the family, my grandparents died by suicide. And that was a very tough time for me. But one thing I could turn to in that time was the Bible. Specifically in the book of Jeremiah, if you want to open up, open up to it, one of the verses that really gave me comfort in that time was Jeremiah 1.5. And that reads, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That meant a lot of things to me during that time. One, it meant that God has a personal relationship with me. And he does for everyone here. He loves all of us and he gives all of us a purpose. And during that time, I was lost. I was a lot younger than I am now, so it was challenging for me to deal with that at such a young age. But reading that, the phrase of prophet to the nations, that comforted me and it should comfort every single one here. Every single one of us has a calling, has a way they can give back, has a way they can contribute to the kingdom. Uh, going further into the book of Jeremiah, there's another good verse. It is Jeremiah 29, 11, and it reads, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. That was a very challenging verse for me at the time. Plans not to harm you. After something like that happened to me, at a young age, I was confused. I was sad and I was scared. But I knew, reading the second half of that, he declares, he gives all of us hope in a future, a purpose to give back. Now for me, like I said before, that was challenging, but recently I started serving in Shine. It's a class at our church for individuals with disabilities, specifically kids, so their parents can go in and service anything. We can all have a fun time and learn about Jesus. And that, it's amazing, I love giving back that way. And it's okay, I know there's a lot of younger people here, specifically the students. And if you don't have it figured out yet, if you don't know what you wanna do, you don't know your purpose yet, that's completely fine. Going over to Romans 5, 8, it reads, but God dem demonstrates his own love for all of us in this. While we we're still sinners, Christ died for us. And that's very comforting as well. Even though we fall short, even though we sin, even though it might not be easy at times, 
It is worth it and we are not exempt from our purpose. When I'm feeling down, when it's difficult for me, just going in on Sunday mornings and seeing the kids' smiles makes my day. Sometimes I need them as much as they need me. And for people who do know their purpose, people who do have it figured out, don't let anything get in your way of giving back to he who died for us. Going over the first Timothy, uh, chapter four, verse 12 reads, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. This is specifically for the students here. But set an example in believers, to the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. We all have a calling, we all have a purpose. And no matter what we look like, how old we are, what language we speak, anything, we all have a purpose and nothing should get in our way of giving back to the kingdom. Before I leave today, I just wanna to reiterate some things. There will be ups and downs, there will be difficult times. You will wanna quit, you will even doubt your faith. But one thing remains true. Just think, if I would have given up, if I would have quit being Christian, quit my faith, I would never have been able to give back every Sunday morning and shine. And that's true for all of us. Every single purpose, every single person here has a purpose. Every single person here has a way they can give back. And if you don't have that figured out yet, that's completely fine. Just before you leave, just think of everything that God has given you, all the tools, because he works in mysterious ways and you will find that opportunity. Thank you. Check, there we go. Okay, thank you for that word. And thank you for everybody who has shared their story tonight. Uh, just real quick, we are here representing a couple Christian colleges. Uh, it's true, God has a calling and a purpose for everybody here. And don't wait to experience God's blessing in your life by plugging into your church and serving. Uh, I waited. I know Brian shared earlier uh, his calling, my calling is in ministry as well. And I went off to college and I was just trying to figure out what that looks like. And once I finally stepped into leadership in the church, I never stopped because that's where I found joy serving the Lord. And I wish I had done it sooner. So don't wait. You don't need a certificate. You don't need a degree. You just need God leading you, okay? So plug into your church and start serving. And when it comes to your future after high school, let God lead you. I know the parent discussion personally, when it comes to ministry, my parents reacted similarly when I told them I was going into ministry and I said, well, I don't know what's gonna happen. God's gonna let that figure, uh, figure out for me. But I was listening to his voice and that's my encouragement to you as well. Uh, Christian colleges are here to partner with you in glorifying God with your future. Great Lakes Christian College is who I represent and our mission is to prepare students to be servant leaders in the church and world. Well, our mission is to glorify God by preparing students to be servant leaders. And so we wanna partner with you in that, in glorifying God by following his call on your life, whatever that looks like. Our graduates are serving in ministries, but they're also teaching in schools and coaching in basketball courts and fields and uh, counseling people and owning their own businesses, whatever that looks like, because God has placed a call on their life and they're serving in those career fields and in the church because we need confident and competent leaders in the kingdom, whether you're paid on staff or you're a member of a church, to know that you have God's word and you can handle it in conversation with others. Okay, so that's what Christian College is here for. And if you want more information, our tables are over there, but I'm gonna let my friend Jim speak. Yeah, my name is Jim, and I'm representing the Central Christian College of the Bible. That's the school that Clarence actually went to school at. It's a little tiny uh, country um, college out in the middle of Missouri. And uh, we're about kingdom work. So whether it's Great Lakes, whether it's Central, whether it's KCU, whether it's Ozark, it doesn't matter. It is kingdom. We wanna build the kingdom. 
And I know that scripture says that the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro looking for those whose hearts are completely and fully his. I'm passing the baton. We've got generations here. I'm at the very back end of that. I've passed the baton just about a year ago. I'm almost 70. Who's going to lead the next generation? The eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro, looking for hearts that are fully and completely his. Make sure that you know what it is that God wants you to do with your life. That's all we care about. And if we as colleges can help you do that and pursue that obedience, that's our heart and that's our desire. Amen. Well, hey, we got some giveaways here. We got some shirts. If they're from Great Lakes or Central, we could swap out sizes if it doesn't fit. If if we got some Milligans and we can't swap those sizes out for you, but here we go. Thank you. Oh, just that, okay. One more giveaway. This is for the 18 and over red ticket. So do you want to pull that one? All right. Dun, dun, dun. So the winner is getting a $250 gift card to get their car completely detailed at Dad's Car Wash here or wherever they are. They're all over. I mean, as an adult, I'm like super excited about it. The winner is Susan Crum. Susan Crum! Susan, where are you? Uh oh. Still here? <laughs> it's not going here. Once, going twice. Okay, all right, pull all right, another all right. one. Aw, oh, poor Susan. Oh, well, there it. There you go. Michael Marino. Hey! hey! Do you have a car? I do have a car. Oh, good. Okay, he's good then, guys. Then you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to continue to worship here, so let's get ready, guys. All right. Just one more. All right. Just one more. We're going to close you out tonight. So stand up. We're going to send more. you out tonight on a good note. Ooh. So sing this with us and you can go home. Y'all ready? And go to bed. Y'all sleep good tonight. So will I. And worship in my sleep. You were born ready. All right. Let's see what you do. Let's go. Oh, please. 
love you guys. Have a great night. We'll see you next year. Bye.